Can we hear the noise? Mic check. Test one, two. Anyway, hello my people, Finder Bub here. Thanks for checking out the video. Today we are talking about my Big Agnes Copper Spur HVUL2 tent, but more specifically, we are talking about this ground sheet that is produced by Big Agnes, sold separately, MSRP, a whopping $70. However, I was luckily able to get this for cheaper because Big Agnes released a new version of the tent and obviously all these retailers are just trying to get rid of their old inventory. So over the winter, uh, I purchased this, haven't been able to use it yet. Obviously we've been locked down. It's been a weird summer so far. A lot of crazy stuff going on in the world, but um, yeah, it's been a weird few months, that's for sure. Again, I apologize for the noise. I'm here in the backyard of my apartment building and there are construction sites all over the place. So hopefully this little localized microphone with this mini wireless transmitter that I've been testing out will do the trick anyway. So about a year and a half ago, I put out my review of this tent. Up until I released my backpack video about my Osprey Stratos 34, this was by far my best performing video. If you haven't seen it, I definitely suggest you go check it out. I'll just give you a little bit of background for what inspired this video. So anyway, in that video, I made the argument that you really shouldn't buy this because this is already a $450 tent and you can basically get the same effect by using just a cheap regular tarp and if you want to know how go check out my other video but in this video i'm going to test this out based on some of your recommendations from the comments of that video and we'll maybe talk about some potential alternatives afterwards once we see how this increases the functionality of the tent all right let's open it up so we got some packaging here shove that away for safekeeping comes a little drawstring satchel unnecessary if they had included it in the actual tent, but I guess I'll take it. See, here's my main gripe with this type of a thing. It's like buying a knife that doesn't come with a sheath or a camera that doesn't come with a battery. I mean, you need this to use the tent properly and Big Agnes really should include it for that high $450 price point. Compared to the rest of the tent, this is probably the easiest part for Big Agnes to produce. It's just a rectangular tarp, smaller than most tarps that you would buy for other purposes. Probably the same material as a rainfly. They don't need to do any fancy stitching. This is probably the easiest part of the, of the whole package to produce. And it costs $70. And so I'm assuming that the company makes the most amount of profit off of this compared to the actual tent. That's why they sell it separately. I'm not gonna criticize shrewd business decisions obviously that's up to the company but when it comes to reviewing these products you just really want to see companies going out on a limb for their customers and i think by selling these ground sheets separately big agnes is not doing that so what we're going to do is we're going to set up the tent with this and talk about all of the different options that this specifically provides that you can't get out of some sort of diy version or a average cheap tarp that you get off the shelf that's you know only five bucks or whatever all right so let me read some of the comments on my last video so that you can get an idea for what i talked about uh oh got some comments on a new video okay so one suggestion that i got more than once was to use tyvek which is a building material used to waterproof the outside of buildings before they put the facade or the paneling on. Um, it's a cheap material you can get at most hardware stores. Anyway, a lot of people were saying that that's a better alternative to the blue tarp just because it's lighter and it's cheaper. You can customize it to any size. Haven't tried that yet, but I already had a blue tarp, so there was no need for me to buy any of that. Hiking with Gus the Cattle Dog says, I use a chunk of Tyvek with adhesive strips that have grommets on the end that you can attach to Tyvek sheets. It's cheap, lightweight, and durable. Yeah, that sounds great. Okay, Safitia Private says, 
Honestly, I've always just gone to the dollar store and bought a cheap shower curtain, cut it to size and use it as a footprint. Never had any problems. That sounds like a great alternative as well. So there are a lot of different DIY substitutes you can use for these ground sheets. And, you know, to be perfectly honest, I only purchased this for the sake of this video to address some of the recommendations that you guys put in the comments. I only justified that decision by way of the fact that this tent and this ground sheet are on sale right now because of the new version that Big Agnes released. So yeah, if you're in the market for a tent, I would definitely recommend going with the old version of the Big Agnes Copper Spur HVL2. That's the one that I have because it's on sale for a significant discount. I actually just got a comment today. Jesse Carlton says, I bought this tent due to your review. Thank you. You're welcome. Glad you found it helpful. Anyway, he also says, plus it's on sale at REI for $291. That is a good deal. Stephen Jenkins says, great review, bud. Thank you. He says, I live in Scotland and I hike in the Highlands. I was watching to see if the tent could be set up using, uh, set up in the rain using a ground sheet and setting up the poles first. I think from your review, this is possible. And with little work with a sewing machine and some eyelets, no reason why you couldn't replicate the ground sheet from cheaper, cheaper contractors tarps. So same idea. F Matt says Tyvek house wrap works well for a ground sheet. You might pick a scrap piece up at a house job site. Just ask permission to keep the piece. That's another great recommendation. This guy, uh, Joseph Dragon, this guy actually recommend that you do buy this ground sheet because he says the third advantage of buying the Big Agnes ground sheet is that it enables you to set up your tent in the rain while keeping the main part of the tent dry. The poles attach to the ground sheet and then you can attach the rain fly. And finally, you attach the tent itself while under the shelter. Okay, this guy C.W. Gibbs says the same thing. The only reason I might buy the footprint is that it would allow me to set, set up the tent in a steady rain by setting up the fly onto the footprint first and then by setting up the actual tent inside the fly out of the rain. Fairy Dust says the same thing. The best thing about having the matching ground sheet is being able to set up the footprint and the rain fly and then go inside and set up the inner tent. That way you don't get any rain in your tent during the setup. Okay, so anybody who recommended that I purchase this all has the same reason. And it's basically so that you can set up the rain fly first with the ground sheet. So then you can go inside the rain flies and then you can set up the rest of the tent from underneath it so that you don't get wet when it's raining. My first reaction to these comments was, you know, I've set up my tent without a matching ground sheet many times in the rain. And yeah, you do get a little bit wet, but if you just do it quick, you don't get that wet and it makes no difference because your body heat from inside the tent is probably gonna make that moisture evaporate anyway. And if it doesn't, you get a little wet. It's part of being outside. However, I can see that on principle, it makes sense why you should avoid getting wet at all costs. Obviously, getting wet in the wrong weather conditions can lead to hypothermia. That's very dangerous. You don't want that to happen. Also, if you have, if you have a down sleeping bag like me, there is the possibility that it would get ruined in the rain. Obviously it hasn't happened to me yet, but look, everybody's experience is different and you know, that's what the comments are for. So I appreciate those of you who have provided feedback and we're gonna, you know, do some setup tests today and see, uh, see what's what. All right, let's, uh, let's set this guy up. All right, so I'm gonna move over here just cause the light's a little more even in the shade. Pro tip, if you're filming outside during the day, better to do it in the shade. You don't get those harsh shadows quite as much. Okay, so now we match up the orange poles with the orange tags here. Do the gray ones. Let's slide it back a little. Okay, so now that we have the poles set up with the ground sheet, it's time to put on the rain fly. 
So you make sure you've got your rain fly right side up. Then find the color of the buckles for whichever side you're on, just like on the bottom. Here we got our two orange buckles here, match up with this side. And we'll just do it in this action. So now we buckle the buckles. Buckle the buckles over here. Okay, so now we have what is essentially a shelter without a bug net. This will protect you from the rain, not so much the cold, but I think that's kind of the point. Yeah, obviously it's not staked down or anything, this won't be flapping in the wind when you have it set up. So yeah, that would come out to about here. All right, now that we've got this pup set up, let's take the rest of our tent, hop on inside and see if we can get her set up without getting wet at all. Even though this is an imaginary test because it's not actually raining. But yeah, I'm already sweaty, so does that count? All right, let's go in here. Come into my clubhouse. Okay, so now we are in the tent, protected from the rain. Gonna stake, stake down this side of the fly, give us a little bit more space under here. So on this part of the tent, there are these two clips on the top that hold the ridge pole in place up here. So if you're just chilling in here and you don't wanna use the bug net, there are little pockets up in the corners, one here, and one on the other side, right here, for this here ridge pole. We can stick one end up here, like that, and then stick the other one there. Okay, so now we've got a nice ridge pole in here. Whew, it's hot in here, very hot in here humid outside. So now let's try to set up this, this, this tent. Again, you want to match up the colors, same as before. So we're going to put the gray with the gray and the orange with the orange. And for this, it's a lot easier you can basically just use these hooks and then just hook it to the poles. Do this side so that you can see. So these are the clips that typically attach to this thing. So once we get this clipped on here, we can transfer this pole to this clip, pull it out of its little sleeve, and then put the clip on here, shove it back in, and pull this one out, put it a little clip on, shove it back in, Ugh, and I'm trapped Ooh. inside my outside tent, outside my inside tent. So this is not the most graceful process I've ever experienced. I'm sweating profusely and I've already just like tripped over myself a few times. I think it would have been a lot easier to just set it up the regular way and I might have gotten a little bit wet if it was raining, but really don't think that makes the difference. It's definitely a lot easier to deal with a little bit of moisture than to deal with this pain in the rear end. So there's some food for thought. 
<laughs> hope that's a helpful little tidbit of insightful information. Let's get this last side hooked up here. That's gonna go down low. So I'm not entirely sure what they want you to do here. Maybe they want you to um, take this out and then sandwich the two like this. Could that work? Uh-oh, it's a little harder. Stick that in this one first and then in this one. Wow, this is a pain in the ass. Okay, let's do the other side. Okay, we got that side. We're gonna go inside the tent so that I don't get wet on the theoretical outside of the tent. All right, we're in our tent. Now we're just going to open this door on this side so that we can do the same thing over here. Okay, so we'll take this corner of the tent, unhook this grommet from the fly and the ground sheet, insert the tent pole into the grommet for the actual tent, and then reinsert it into the grommet for the ground sheet that's attached to the rain fly. Same as these over here. Oh man, so sweaty. Okay, that's done. Okay, my official conclusion after setting up this tent from the inside is that I stand by what I said in my last video. You do not need this stupid ground sheet. It is a waste of money and the effort that it takes to set up the tent from the inside out is not even close to being worth it compared to the little bit of moisture that you might get on your clothes or your tent if you set it up the regular way in the rain. So I stand by what I said in my last video buy a cheaper tarp, or do what one of the people in the comments suggested, buy a piece of Tyvek, or cut up a shower curtain or something like that, so that it matches the size of the footprint of the tent, and you'll be just as well off as anyone who paid $70 for the ground sheet. That was a lot of effort to prove a point that I already thought I made, but hey, that's what this dialogue is for, and I would still appreciate you guys um, giving feedback on my opinions and what I say in my videos so that we can continue to learn about this type of stuff. This channel is really all about enjoying the finer things in life. Obviously that's uh, something that, you know, has been tough lately with what's going on with the virus and everything. Um, yeah, like uh, personally, I, I was supposed to get an MRI for my shoulder like months ago and I only got it yesterday, and then, and then I finally got a haircut after that. My brother had to cancel his wedding. It was supposed to be at the end of March. Yeah, it was a really big bummer that we had to postpone it. We're already most of the way into June, and yeah, still not sure when that's gonna be rescheduled for. My wife um, was redeployed from her usual physiatry department at the hospital. So she was redeployed to a COVID unit. They basically converted an auditorium into just this giant hospital ward for all these COVID patients. And it was just a really nerve wracking and crummy experience to like send her off into a room full of sick people. And, you know, I really got to commend her bravery and her work ethic for putting up with that. And I can only imagine how tough it was for her. I mean, it was tough for me, like having her go there every day and worrying about her well-being. But you know, that at least has subsided here in New York and we seem to be past the peak. So yeah, it's, it's just been a real bummer. You know, haven't really been able to get out and film new videos. That's part of the reason why I'm doing this uh, in my backyard here. Um, I have a lot of footage from some really old trips that I've been putting out in the meantime. And I hope you guys are, are cool with that just cause uh, it's, it's just what I have to work with right now and I promise that uh, more exciting stuff is coming soon. Just got to uh, play it safe and be responsible about proper social distancing and making sure that you're not causing unnecessary strains on the medical professionals and emergency services that might 
need to help people dealing with the COVID situation instead of coming to rescue someone like me or you who's out in the woods and hurt their ankle or something and needs to be evacuated. As annoying and as, as rough as it, it's been for me, there are plenty of people who have it way worse than I do, even before this pandemic, just because of the circumstance that they were born into. With everything that's been going on recently, uh, with the murder of George Floyd and all the other atrocities that have been committed against the black community in the United States, it's really a shame and it's not even a new problem. You know, everybody deserves a right to life, liberty and the pursuit of happiness. And it shouldn't matter where you're from or who your parents are or what you look like or, you know, who you love. And yeah, it's just a real shame. You know, obviously if, if you're a police officer and you're watching this, I don't hate you because you're a police officer and nobody should hate you because you're a police officer. But I definitely do think that the Black Lives Matter movement uh, needs more attention than it's been getting. And, you know, it's not something that's just gonna go away. It, it just sucks that I, I feel the need to talk about this because it's an extremely important issue. And the fact that people are still not paying attention to it or they're trying to ignore it or they're trying to downplay the severity of it, is just messed up. I've gotten a lot of really nice comments up until now, and you know, some people make fun of me and that's fine. Um, I'm, I'm happy to have like a funny back and forth. And if I didn't respond to your comment, you know, of you criticizing me, it's probably because I thought you were right and I was just too stubborn to say anything <laughs> or I wanted to address it in an actual video instead of a comment. But if you're just gonna sling hate and you're just gonna be nasty like I've seen on other channels, you're just gonna get blocked because this is a community of learning and a community of togetherness. And I want to encourage people to think that we're all in this together because we are. I want people to appreciate a love for the environment and a love for everyone's ability to partake in that opportunity, which unfortunately is not the case. I'm lucky you know, that I grew up in a well-to-do household. You know, I, I, I'm as privileged as they come. And, you know, I'm lucky that I, I have the ability to go hiking and to spend my time doing these fun things, you know? Um, and just, some people just don't have that. And, you know, uh, yeah. And that on top of being like afraid to leave your home on a daily basis just because you're worried about, you know, getting harassed by the people who are supposed to be protecting you. That's not what it means to live in a free country. Um, that's the opposite of free. And anybody who says or tries to downplay that, you know, is part of the problem. And yeah, so, you know, feel free to have a discussion in the comments, but if you start saying racist shit, start saying hateful stuff, you're gonna get blocked. You're gonna get banned. I don't want you part of my community. I don't want you part, part of this channel. I don't want you watching my videos. I don't want you benefiting from anything that I'm trying to provide because you are detracting from society. I'm not saying that most of you are doing this. In fact, I, I, I hope that most of you have a, have a good attitude about wanting to help people. And I'll be perfectly honest, I'm not an expert. I'm not, I don't have any firsthand experience. Obviously, I'm a white guy. I'm you know, able to walk outside and hide behind the color of my skin every day. It's just really not fair that people should have to live with that fear. Obviously, I'm not an expert on any of this, as I said, but I'm going to leave some resources in the description about this crisis from people who are informed and who also have gone through these experiences. I personally would really recommend this movie I watched last night called Just Mercy. It's with uh, Michael B. Jordan and Jamie Foxx, it was a really good movie and it really helped, you know, I mean, it's not like it changed my mind or anything. I already felt this way before, but it really just put me, it, it really helps put you in the perspective of people who are being oppressed. And I think that's a really important perspective to have and to, uh, and to be aware of. And I think it'll help with, uh, anyone's ability to empathize with, uh, you know, the black community and see why uh, supporting their cause is the right thing to do. I can't even imagine what it would have been like 
to to grow up in in one of these neighborhoods um you know like in minneapolis where where george floyd was from i mean that video if you haven't seen it you should definitely watch it it's it's horrific but it is important and just the fact that that can happen on camera and that people can still be against it is just mind-boggling to me so you know what the next time you're outside appreciating nature and appreciating the beauty of the world that you are so lucky to have the opportunity to enjoy just try to take a moment to think about all the people who don't have that opportunity and how we can together as as an outdoor loving community help create equal opportunity for um, for all people to to be able to enjoy the same things that we do I mean I know I'm rambling here but <laughs> When I first started this channel, I was hell-bent on never talking about politics or re religion, even though I have a lot of thoughts on the matter, you know, because they're divisive topics and I wanted to create a place where people could come for, uh, for positive things and for, you know, good experiences and to, and to learn how, how they can create these opportunities for themselves. You know, I, I have a bunch of videos that, that I've scheduled you know, that I've released since this started going down and it just felt very weird uh, putting those videos out. Uh, you know, I did put them out, but I, I just, yeah, I felt like I should say something because if, if even one person who's watching this, you know, who was maybe on the fence for whatever reason because they were misinformed um, about the facts of the situation or something, if one person can, can you know, change their perspective and change their minds so that they view I mean I can't believe I'm saying this because it should be a given like people are people and you should treat them the way you want to be treated as a person and yeah it's just sick it just sickens me that that there's so much abuse that goes on by the people who are supposed to protect you know yeah it's it's just it's really sad and it's really messed up. And if you want to go to a protest, I definitely think you should. You should support the cause. It's an important cause. But I would say, you know, obviously coronavirus is still a very real thing. You know, you should um, practice proper social distancing. You should wear a mask. You should wear gloves, especially if you're going to be around people. You should wash your hands thoroughly. And yeah, um, just be safe out there. Yeah, the right to assemble. It's the first fucking amendment. So. If you believe in the manifesto of the United States, then you should also believe in the manifesto of the Black Lives Matter movement because they are one and the same. I mean, I don't know what more I could say about this because it just seems so fucking obvious. It's just like I'm, I'm working myself up here, like talking about it just because there's no argument. It's just cruelty to human beings is wrong Kindness to human beings is right, okay? Treating somebody differently because of the color of their skin is wrong. Yeah, fuck, I don't even, yeah. Anyway, to all of you who have subscribed to this channel, I wholeheartedly appreciate all of you, you know. Um, it's, it's, you know, it's been a journey for sure. Um, we're still very much at the beginning of this whole thing. And, you know, I hope to grow a lot more over the next year. You know, it's, it's June now and, you know, last June I had less than 100 subscribers and now I'm like almost at 800 or something like that. And it's grown a lot in the last few months especially and, it, and it's like really just continued to speed up. So thank you so much to all of you who have supported me and to all of you who have, you know, posted positive comments and posted feedback. Yeah, so just a big thank you to everyone who has supported this channel up until now, especially my friends and family. I know you guys are probably sick of me texting you links to the videos that I've just posted, but you know, I really do appreciate it. So thank you very much, especially my wife for putting up with me uh, as I've been making these videos in our living room. <laughs> and um, to everyone who has subscribed, 
and who has, you know, been given the thumbs up or even thumbs down, you know, I, I appreciate the feedback. I've, I've definitely gotten some criticisms on some of my videos and, you know, I'm taking those seriously. But yeah, mostly it's just been positive. And so I really appreciate that. And yeah, thank you guys so much. And, you know, let's, let's all try to help the world uh, appreciate the finer things in life together. And uh, yeah, I'm excited to continue this journey with the rest of you. If you're new to the channel, I usually post every other week and I usually make uh, camping and backpacking videos um, and, and gear reviews. So, you know, that content will resume next week. Um, I just, you know, felt like I should, yeah, say, say this stuff because it's just really been on my mind. And, you know, I, I, wanna, I wanna get better at, you know, being a little more personal in my videos. I definitely have been relying a lot on my scripting process because maybe I'm a little self-conscious about my ability to speak coherently directly to the camera. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to do more videos like this uh, in addition to the other stuff that I've been doing. I'm gonna leave some, some resources down below that you know I felt were very informative about the current situation that's going on in our country and you know, I'll, I'll put a link to that movie that I recommended. I also will leave a piece by John Oliver, which I thought was very well put together and well researched and well, well said. And then I'm gonna put two testimonials uh, by, by two African-American, um, I guess, you know, public personalities that I follow. One is Marquez Brownlee, NKBHD. He's a tech YouTuber who I really think you should check out, but uh, he uh, and uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, you know, he's the curator of the uh, Hayden Planetarium at the Museum of Natural History in New York. Um, they both released sort of testimonials, I guess, um, titled the same thing called uh, Reflecting on the Color of My Skin. And uh, they're just about what it's been like to live in America as a black man. and. I think that it's very important to listen to these types of perspectives because, you know, some people grow up in insulated communities. I definitely know that I did. And, you know, they may never be exposed to this information if somebody doesn't show it to them. So yeah, I'll, I'll leave some, some links down below to some resources for that. And I really do suggest that you listen to these testimonials by Marquez and by Neil deGrasse Tyson and also watch that movie um, just mercy because you know these are important things and register to vote that's probably the best thing you can do it's an important time in, in, in our country we're going through some growing pains and you know if we want to continue to lead the world um, in, in the way that we have we, we need to get our act together because we've, we've been setting a pretty pretty bad example you know, I'm not gonna hate on any individuals. I, I, I think that everyone has good in their hearts, but everyone also has the capacity for bad. And I think it's important for everyone in this age of information where we have the ability to share our thoughts over the internet with people across the world that we open ourselves up to the experience of other people who may not have it as good as we do and um, understand why they're hurting because they definitely are and it's, it's definitely avoidable. So yeah, I'm sorry for rambling on for this long, but I'm also not sorry because yeah, this is important. So anyway, <laughs> that concludes today's episode of the Finder Probe Show. If you've already tried the Big Agnes ground sheet or one of the alternatives I've mentioned in this video, or if you've already seen one of the movies or the testimonials that I link below, um, I'd love to have you comment below, uh, especially if you think your insight can help me disprove something that I think I already know. If you're looking for new gear or planning your next trip, don't let the small details stress you out. Remember, life's an adventure, so relax, breathe in the outdoors, and don't forget to appreciate the finer things in life. And also, don't forget to appreciate everyone around you because we're all people and we're all in this together in this beautiful environment that we call planet Earth. And we should do what we can to protect it and the people within it so that we can all live harmoniously 
and appreciate what is there to appreciate. And, you know, if we don't, we'll all reap the, uh, the consequences of our misdeeds. So, yeah, just, uh, yeah. In this age of information where we actually have access to multiple opinions and we don't have to just wait for the one or two channels on TV to tell us what's what, or the newspaper even, you know, uh, we have a responsibility to actively seek out the truth. And, you know, I, I feel like my purpose is kind of meaningless in a time like this because, yeah, I just, I really think that in order to appreciate the finer things in life, you should first have to acknowledge that some people can't. In conclusion, watch the links in the videos down below. Don't buy this ground sheet. I stand by what I said in my first video about this tent. You do not need this ground sheet. It is a huge waste of money. Anyway, um, that's all for today. As the illustrious potato jet would say, remember to eat your vegetables and try not to act like a dick. Peace. Oh, I screwed this up. This is supposed to be on the top. Oops. This bar is supposed to be over the top of this so that it rests nicely here. It's still a pain in the ass though to set up from the inside, so I stand by what I said, even though I screwed this up. Also, another pro tip, I don't know if I mentioned it in the last video, but you should never like fold up your jackets or your, or your uh, tent material. You should always smush it in, crumple it up, because if you start folding it, you'll create creases on the places where you fold it continuously in the same place over and over again. And creases can lead to rips, and we don't want that, do we? Okay, another technique, pro tip, get all the dirt out of your tent before you take off the, before you take off the poles, just lift it upside down, get out all the dirty dirts and the yucky yucks. We'll rip her back up as you do. Yo, do I look like Dr. Octopus? I'm gonna get you, Spider-Man. Blah, 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 blah.
By the way, who's excited for that new Snyder cut of the, uh, the Justice League movie? I mean, I don't want to get my hopes up or anything, but yeah, I mean, how often do movies get re-edited and re-released like that? Because they were bad the first time. Not many, not many at all. Get off my tent. Maybe ants. Nope, out. Away. No ants allowed. See if I'm in frame here. This tarp costs $70. I only paid 50, but that's still too much.
Thumbnail, thumbnail. Okay. Okay, I'm done. <laughs>